I've qualified to the Zolo Victory Cash Cup Finals loads of times and today I'm going to break down five step secret formula that I follow so you can qualify every single week. Secret formula number one and this is the format. Before I give you tips that will help you dominate not just in the Solo Victory Cup but every single tournament ever, we need to know how the format works so we can play based on the format. As you're probably aware, the format is the same as last season, top 11,500 qualify on EU, 9,000 on NA, 750 on OCE and every other region being 1,250. There are a ton of spots up for grabs and with 30 points for a win and only one point for a kill, there are actually quite a lot of points up for place. Just winning one game alone is the same as dropping 30 kills, so of course kills are important, but those placement points points are gonna be crucial and secret formula number two comes in perfectly with how you should play this is a question i get asked all the time what is the best way to play to make it to finals if you are a good fighter and you can consistently be able to drop decent kill wins maybe you can consistently drop a 15 20 kill win in ranked and you're sort of that higher sort of rank elite champion and real rank sort of area and you know you're a very good fighter in your first game you want to aim for a 10 to 15 kill win this is what all the pro players aim for and it's near enough impossible not to qual if you can drop one a 10 kill win alone puts you on 40 points which means from one game you're already 55 percent of the way to qualifying for finals which means all you need is a good few solid end games and you've done it and because of this it means you only actually need three good games to make it to finals you don't even need to go around dropping super high kill games, playing every single game out, looking to try and get 20, 30 points every single game because all you need is three solid games. That's why if you successfully pull off a 10 kill win, I recommend every single person to ease off king and just play the rest of the games for the win. The mistake I see way too many people make is they drop a 10 kill win first game and then they're queuing into the last one with 45 points, meaning they got 40 points first game and five points in the rest of the tournament. And all because they're w king after getting a decent kill win if you're on the other side though maybe you're not the best fighter and you're thinking well i don't know if i'll even be able to drop a 10 15 kill win i struggle to get kills in tournaments then this tournament also benefits you as well because you don't even need a 10 kill win to make it to finals you can literally qualify with zero kills so maybe if you're thinking i'm not that good of a fighter just play for end game and prioritize getting them kills late on i've seen some of the worst players manage to make it to finals just by playing to end game and i've seen some really good players struggle to make it because they're prioritizing those kills way too much because you can get so many free kills just by sitting in a box and shooting at people as they rotate in all my cash cut videos i make i always tell you guys the perfect time to queue into your first game to get the easiest lobbies and you guys absolutely love it and have been able to get some of your best placements ever from it so in the solo cash cup you want to queue into your game 10 to 15 minutes late i found around the 12 minute mark is the sweet spot between easy lobbies but not wasting too much time and the reason why is because most people queue up five minutes late and the reason why people do this is because they believe if they queue up five minutes late they're gonna get put into a lobby with people that have died straight away in their first game but everyone has done this for years and the lobby's just filled with everyone else who's five minute late started which means it does not change anything by queuing up five minutes in by queuing up a little bit later you actually get those lobbies with the bad players who are dying off spawn and most of the time you're going to be in a lobby with people that have died two times off spawn meaning you get even easier lobbies that die out much much quicker giving you hardly any players in end game which allows for a free win now we know when to queue up and how to play based off the format we're now going to get into secret formula number three arguably the most important one on this list and this is drop spots and off spawn if there is a question i get asked all the time that is what is the best drop spot for the solo cash cup and well there isn't one drop that is better than the rest things like medallions are obviously nice to have but in all honesty i recommend you just pick one spot on the map it could be a house it could be a poi it can be whatever you want it to be some of the best drop spots with players who get some of the most points can literally just be a house on the edge of the map with slurp barrels and a ton of chests i mean especially towards some of those newer pois recently as well there's been a ton of chests in some of those buildings 
it's solely based up to you. If you're a decent player, you can land and try and dominate a POI, which is probably your best bet. If you're not so good, land a smaller area like a house and just land there non-stop in ranked. You can be super, super good at the game or you can be super bad at the game and winning off spawn is going to make all the difference over who quals. I've seen players who are unbelievably skilled at this game they are very very good players who should qualify week in week out struggle to qualify because they don't have a proper drop they know like the back of their hand and i've seen some really bad players who in all honesty can hardly even drop a five kill win in ranked manage to qualify just down to that and I think that is the one thing that will really make all the difference in the solo cash cut for so many players. So make sure, even before the tournament, that you have one spot that you're going to land. And you've landed there, I don't know, maybe 50, 60, 100 plus times in rank to master that spot. This is so, so important. And I think having a spot you can win 100% of the time literally makes the game 100 times easier for yourself. So it doesn't matter where you land. Just make sure you've landed there a load of times and you know it very well. In regards to off spawn, if you have a spot in mind you really like and you don't really know what the best loot route is, go to a tournament that has been played already. Go to high elo games, go to pro player and just go to one of their, maybe their last game or something, or game after they dropped a 20, 30 kill win and just watch someone who lands there and see what loot that they follow. 99% of the time, the players in high elo or in finals have a specific loot route that will allow them to get the most amount of loot in the shortest time possible. You can also use things like Fortnite.gg to help you figure out where most of the loot is so you can make your own. I have made some of my best loot routes myself just by looking where the chests are and just playing ranked to figure out the quickest ways to open them all and then adapting it based off what pro players who land at my spot do. When I spawn, there are three things that you need to look out for when deciding your route that will overall give you an advantage over the other players and this is the information that every pro coach is telling two pro players and exactly what they're putting in mind when they're making them their loot route. And number one is fairly obvious, but that's your loot. If I get a gold shotgun, SMG and a sniper, and I'm fighting a guy who's got a pistol, it's fairly obvious that I have an advantage. But even having just a better shotgun can be the difference off spawn, which is why it's so important to open as many chests as you can. That's not the only reason you should be opening loads of chests, as advantage number two is health. You can give someone a gold shotgun, a full gold loadout, and a medallion, but give him no shield and put him against a guy who has a sniper, you're technically one HP. So incorporating things like barrels or guaranteed chests can be a great way to maximise your shields. I think they've added some rare chest spawns this season as well as a ton of slurp barrels and slurp trucks. And incorporating some of these into your off spawn can just give you a big advantage. And finally, off spawn advantage number three is materials. You want to aim for 500 plus materials in total off spawn. This is just going to give yourself the highest chance of winning if you can get them. And then finally, this is more of like a bonus one. But this is high ground. If you land at a spot that has a part which is particularly elevated, potentially incorporating these things into your drop spot could just give yourself the advantage and the highest chance of winning of spawn. Now, moving on to our secret formula number four, we're on to mid game. This is where a lot of players struggle and it can be very hard even for really good players to always make them best decisions coming into the mid game. But an overall guide for most players, even if you're looking to WK in fact, I would probably say this is even more important if you're looking to WK when coming into mid game, but that's avoid the center of the map in them earlier zones. Obviously, when you're in the center of the map, you have the highest chance of pulling next zone. I think everyone knows this, and especially for them first few zones, you're always going to pull it. Which is why everyone always thinks it's a great idea to rotate towards the centre of the map. Obviously certain zones the centre is going to be more contested than others. But an overall guide, most people when rotating are just going to look to get to the centre. So I'd recommend most people to avoid it. And you're probably thinking, Taven, why do you hate the centre so much and the reason why is as i've learned the hard way in previous tournaments it's near enough impossible not to get into a fight in the center of the zone and when you do you have around 10 seconds to finish that fight before third party pulls up then you get the fourth fifth sixth and you literally cannot escape until you're dead 
making it so so hard to live so i just recommend avoiding it all costs even if you're going for a 10 15 kill win you can still do that by going around dead side and just finding players that way next up in mid game is radio towers i think there are only two in the game at the moment as far as i'm aware near snooty and Meckless. but if you have these around your spots just keep in mind that I would 100% recommend that you go for them. Being able to see them next zones will just allow you to get dead side early and help you out so much later on when looking to get that win. I often get the question of what do I do if I'm scuffed on loot. There are times where you could be super, super scuffed on loot. Maybe you've had to run away off spawn. I know I've had that quite a few times and it kind of sparks up that debate of mid game fighting. Maybe you're higher elo and you're not too sure if you should fight or not. And this could be a bit up and down. So here is my personal recommendation on my experiences. Now, if you're scuffed on loot, there's no point in trying to play for the win. I think trying to play for the win with literally no shield, hardly any health and really bad loot is near enough impossible unless you randomly run into some loot that no one's picked up but something needs to happen for you to be able to win that game so i reckon you should rotate around maybe find a few pois or any other places to pick up some scraps but if it's getting towards those later parts of the game maybe you're going more towards the end of mid game you're gonna need to get yourself a mid game kill if you want to survive towards that top five to first place if you're going for maybe five points to qualify is that all you need then obviously it don't matter too much but if you know you're gonna need 20 25 points in that game it's just about being smart not forcing these mid game fights and just trying to pick up a kill because it's going to be so so hard for you going into end game in that scuffed position when people are in a situation where they're scuffed i see way too many people just forcing a fight and dying rather than waiting for a good opportunity when you force a fight with awful loot you already have a disadvantage so at this point i'd recommend rotate towards the dead side of zone where you're not going to get third party as much and either look for one of the two things if you're a decent fighter and you want to get kills mid game i would look to try and get a big beam off on someone and w key them. every single pro player does this and that big beam off the start is going to be massive for getting yourself points if you're not so good third partying is going to be your best friend but it's important we come in at the right time i know you're probably thinking but taven what do you mean coming to a third party at the right time well, I'm glad you asked. There are two times when coming into third party is going to give you a big advantage to increase your chances of winning. If you go in when they're both healing up, all that's going to happen is one of them is going to make a ton of boxes while the other meds up and when you're about to make play the other guy just healed up is going to come after you and pretty much you're going to put yourself in a 1v2 situation instead you need to come in at the right time now time number one is when they deal big bits of damage on each other if you hear them both crack each other's shield now is the perfect time to come in and look to steal that kill and the reason why is because you could just hop straight into a box and 50 50. Yes, don't be afraid in tournaments just to hop in boxes. All the best players do it and you need to have that confidence if you actually want to win fights. And you should back yourself. If you hear that shield crack 99% of the time, hopping in that box, you're gonna win. You just need that confidence to go and do it. Finally, the second best time to come in is as soon as the other guy gets the kill. If you can get into the fight before he meds up, that is the perfect time to increase your chances of winning a third party. But once we have really good loot, we did really well in mid game, we didn't go towards the centre of the earlier zone, so we're still alive, we can now break into secret formula number 5, and this is the end game. This could be the make or break between you spending 20 minutes for 5 points or 21 minutes for 25. It genuinely could be the difference between you qualifying and you not. And my best tip for end game is to play every single one to win. Whether you have 5 mats, 500 bats, you need to play to win. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean play to win? Of course I play to win. Every game I go into I play. But what I mean by play to win in the end game is you want to avoid going for kills too much. If a free kill is going or you're really desperate for 100% go for it. But 90% of the time, especially in opens, you're going to be much, much better off just rotating to zones, 
focusing on that zone, boxing, playing endgame slower, rather than being super desperate. Always look for a free opportunity for kills, don't get me wrong, but don't tunnel focus players unless you really have to. The amount of times I've seen players full focusing others when they literally have all the mats in the world and they could just rotate and they literally have win condition is unbelievable and every single time they end up dying which is just a ridiculously annoying way to die i would much rather die with no mats at all because i didn't go for a refresh than die with 1500 mats because i had a refresh and i got greedy i'm not going to go too in depth on winning end games in this video as a lot of it comes down to experience so if you really struggle with your end games my best advice would be to one work on your aim this will help you out massively if you're playing things like box pvps and stuff that will train your aim in sort of those more chaotic close range scenarios two watch pro see what they do when they go for high what layers they're on etc and just look for ways to learn if you want me to bring a full end game guide out where I actually go into end games and show you exactly how you should think and what you should be doing, comment down below. Anyways, I wish you the best of luck in your solo cash cup. I do respond to all comments, so ask me any questions you may still have after the video down below. And if you found the advice helpful, please can you subscribe to the channel. As a smaller creator, it helps me out more than you can imagine. And if you like this video, drop it a like and you may also like this video on screen now.